Welcome back to Alicia's in the Kitchen. Today I am going to take you on a tour of my garden that's back here behind me. I'm not a garden vlogger, but I have been in the garden since I was knee high to a grasshopper. Um, I was raised by my great grandparents and they taught me a lot about the garden. Um, and so now I would like to take you all and take you on weekly tours of my garden so you can see what I have going on. I don't know if you can see the fig tree behind me. Um, it is about 15 feet tall. I'm going to back up towards it so you can kind of get a better idea of just how big it is. So I'm 5'6", so you can imagine it's very tall. We have two of those and, and they produce a lot of figs for us. And then you can see right there is our garden and we have Premier One fencing around our garden to keep the animals out because we have skunks and fox and possums and rabbits and all kinds of other vermin. So we don't want those getting into our garden and we use Premier One to help keep some of those out plus the deer. Lots so lots. I'll just give you a quick pan of the garden so you can kind of get an idea of what we have going here and then we will get into it. So I'm going to start right here and these empty spaces that you can see are where we have already pulled our garlic for this year and then this is uh, Kelvin celery that we seeded ourselves. I'm very very excited about that and this is actually some celery that I purchased at the store. Nothing exciting about that. Um, and then you can see we've got onions, these are actually shallots, and then a couple rows of onions. But I'm going to walk you down here and we'll have a look around down there. Also, I should probably tell you that we have planted dill in where the garlic was. Some of the other spaces have um, nasturtiums planted in them and zinnias. So you can see some decent sized little zinnias starting to come up there. But um we have a few cabbages and this one is a conical shaped cabbage i don't remember planting the conical shaped cabbage but sometimes when i'm cleaning up my seeds stuff gets uh mixed up so this guy is definitely developing a cone head and our shallots are a real travesty this year they bolted terribly when we had uh, varying highs and lows. And this is a cabbage that's bolting. It, it didn't get big enough soon enough. And I should tell you that these are collard greens and I picked them all back very severely um, just last night because they're just growing like crazy. I imagine we won't have those much longer, but that's what those are. And then we have a few more cabbages here. Um, this one is just starting to make its head. And this one is heading up very nicely. These are supposed to be um, early Dutch cabbage, I think. You can see I've got a nice size head there. I'm hoping to give it another week. And then we'll go ahead and pull it out because he is getting purple on top. And then this one got eaten on early in the season, but I'm still just letting him grow because we might get something usable in there still and it is heading up very nicely. And then this one's gonna try to make a head, but I don't think it'll get there before it gets too warm here. So now if we turn around, um, this is Chinese white celery and you can see it has very white stems and it's supposed to get decent size so we'll see how that does um, I also seeded that myself so this whole row is onions these are all red onions and then we have a row of peppers here and we have a lot of different types of peppers growing um, but one that I am really enjoying 
is this Luch Shower Paprika. And you can see we've already got some decent sized peppers on here. And it is just loaded with blooms. And I am excited to have this to see what kind of paprika we can make out of it this year. And then this is another row of onions. Um, these are all yellow onions. I don't remember what onions I planted. I can go look back and uh, let you guys know, but um, you can see they are starting to bulb up. And then these are giant red celery. You can see that the stalks have a redness to them. So you can see that the stalks have a redness to them. And I planted those um, in between the onions so that the onions would give them some shade as it's getting kind of hot here already. And some of the peppers don't really have much for peppers on them yet. They've got littles, but full of blooms. Um, and then some have some decent peppers on them. So this is a sheep's nose paprika. So again, growing peppers that we can uh, make our own seasonings out of. So... I will try to list down below all the different uh, peppers that we're growing. Same thing with the tomatoes, because uh, there's a lot of them. And then I'll, maybe I'll try to highlight a different one each week. Um, we still have a few yellow beets, and the few onions here that made it are white onions in this row. And the reason they didn't make it was because the deer were coming up and eating them. So, uh, let's see. I've pulled most of my beets, and there will be a pickled beet. Um, there will be a pickled beet canning video coming out soon. And then, just last week, I planted out my zucchinis and squash. Man, we got a helicopter going over now. So, so far my crooknecks have come up. Nothing here in my Ford Hook Zucchini. These are straight neck yellow squash. And then these are um, the Genovese Zucchini. And nothing, actually something did come up there. I think something has eaten it. So, may not have any zucchini this year. And then we planted out some melons as well. Um, we've got tigger melons growing there. And I do have little plant markers, but they're hard to see. And then these are Madura's melons. And then these are Grisolette or Grisolet. If it's, if it's French, then it's Grisolet, but I don't know. So that's some of our melons that we're growing. And then down here is our green beans. And this row, oh. this row here has dragon tongue bush beans in the front. And then it's kind of spotty other things. We had weird germination this year um, as I was trying to use up some old seeds. So this one and this one are a little spotty. Um, I know these are Landreth stringless beans that are planted in here, but like I said, very spotty germination, and we've been dealing with moles and ants and all of that. Um, this whole roll is Royal Burgundy beans. I don't know if you can tell on camera, these rows are about 25 feet long, um, and these are blooming out. They have beautiful blooms, so you get that dark purple, and then the bloom is a lighter purple, and I just think they're very pretty in the garden. And 
And then these are Blue Lake beans. Um, these were a Carson wax, and I had planted the whole row Carson wax. And you can see right there again, low germination. Um, so then I replanted some Dior wax beans, and that's what's back there. And then the front of this row I replanted. These are jade beans, jade beans, and then these are Roma twos. I I think the back end of one of these two rows is also a flat bean, but it's a yellow flat bean. So that's kind of where we are with the beans so far this year. All right, so when I turn around, this brings us to our tomatoes. And we have 60-ish plants. Um, this row, maybe this would be easier if I walk to the front end, so let me do that. So on this first row here, we have Abe Lincoln's for the first six plants. And then we have Kellogg's Breakfast Tomatoes for the last six plants. Yeah, this is a 12 space. Um, and this is what the Abe Lincolns look like when they're green. And then we'll walk down and see the Kellogg's breakfast. This little guy is a Kellogg's breakfast. I just knocked a bloom face off. Let's see if I can get to focus. So that guy's a Kellogg's breakfast. And he's got friends down here. And so far, this one has three fruiting spurs. So there's this one, this one, and this one. I expect this to get to at least five fruiting spurs. So I'm trying to grow this tomato for the big mater contest. Um, but I have backups going up the plant too. But like I said, the rest of these are Kellogg's breakfast. And we'll go over and take a look at that other row. So the first part of this row is cherry tomatoes. Um, these are a white cherry. I think I got those from Johnny Seeds. And then these are a yellow pear. And then those are a Tommy Toe tomato. Tommy Toe tomatoes have like sentimental value to me because when I was a child, uh, the house that we lived in when I was really small had a smokehouse and uh, other outbuildings and a barn and all, but on the side of the smokehouse, Tommy Toe tomatoes just grew up every year. So they kind of bring me back to my childhood and to my great grandparents, so that's why I grow those. And then, it's kind of hard to show you guys all the different tomatoes. Um, so that's a pineapple tomato. This is a brandy wine. This is a brandy wine. And this is a striped German, which it's only got a few little bitty tomatoes on it so far, but I've got high hopes for it. This one here is a wood brimmer, and you can see it's got a decent amount of tomatoes on it. And this is a Dr. Weich's yellow tomato. And he's got quite a bit of fruit down there on him. And then the one next to him is a beefsteak. I've never grown beefsteak tomatoes before, guys. So it'll be interesting to see um, how these turn out. So far, it's mostly leaves, but we do have plants or tomatoes hiding back in there. Um, so we'll see how those turn out. And then this is a chef's choice. And you can see why it's a chef's choice. It is hanging with beautiful tomatoes. And it's putting on more fruit up here and more up here. Um, so they, they're, I've grown those before. They're a really tasty tomato. And then this is a sun gold, which is also a small cherry style tomato. They have a really great flavor. Um, and they turn gold, you know, they're a yellowy tomato. Let's see, little fruiting spurs and more and more. <laughs> and then this guy is a yellow brandy wine, which he lost a lot of his blooms early on when we struck off hot. So now that things have cooled back down like they should be, I expect him to be putting on some fruit soon. And this one is also a yellow brandy wine, 
which one thing I was really surprised of with these this year is these leaves like they are massive as far as tomato leaves go um, very interesting looking this tomato is a Rebecca Allen and I find them to be a little late to set fruit I, I love the taste of the tomato, but they're a little finicky, so if we don't have great luck with it this year, I probably won't grow them again. And then these, this one and this one are both big rainbow. Um, and this one, again, lost a lot of its blooms when it got so hot. Um, but then the guy next to it is loaded down, so there could be a soil issue too because this is the area of the garden that's more new. So these two are one of my favorites. These are Pantano Romanesco and they are just an absolutely gorgeous tomato. Really good flavor. They're a red tomato um, and I just really really enjoy these and they're very productive and even though you get an occasional cat faced plant or cat faced tomato. For the most part, I don't get a whole lot of cat facing on these. These are new to me this year. Um, these are Buratino, and they have a very strange kind of growing habit, or at least strange to me. They make these really long, uh, just odd leaves. Like, I don't usually see the vines coming off looking like that. But the tomatoes are looking really good. They're more of a Roma-shaped tomato. Um, and so I think, I think we're gonna like these. We'll see. So right next to it, I've got the Korean tomatoes, the Korean long tomatoes. And I'm really excited for these. Right now, I've only got three um, fruiting spurs coming off on it. And it's possible sometimes when I go to trim, I get a little overzealous, so it's possible I trimmed one off. But this is a gorgeous paste or style tomato, and it's getting some good size to it. So I'm excited to see how these turn out, because they're looking pretty prolific. And this little shorty is a dad's sunset. Again, another tomato that I really enjoy. Um, they're just a nice round slicer type, but you can see he's a little shorter than everybody else. So I don't know if he had some problems because of our soil or if he's just slow to get going. Um, but he does have two fruiting spurs already, and I'm sure as he grows he'll get more. And this is a Cherokee purple. I know everybody loves Cherokee purple tomatoes but I find them to be a little finicky as well. Now, I've got two fruiting spurs down there. Here's another third one here, and then we've already got another one coming out here. So they can be prolific, no doubt about that. But I just haven't made my mind up yet if they're worth the trouble that they are. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that a little further in the season. So this is a German Johnson. And so far, it looks like it's gonna be pretty prolific. This is my first year growing these, but it has a lot of fruiting spurs on it. We're already up to six fruiting spurs, and it's only about four foot tall, so it'll be interesting to see how much fruit that gives off. And then these last three on this row are Amish paste. So obviously Amish paste are a paste tomato, and you can see he is just hanging full. And then another fruiting spur here, another fruiting spur here, and then we've got another one coming out there. Um, so I always have really good production out of these. And these are the only, normally the only pasty uh, indeterminate that I try to grow. Now, I did grow those two, the Burrotino and the um, Korean Long this year, but I don't know. This, These are kind of my tried and true indeterminate paste tomatoes. These last two rows are both determinate tomatoes. Um, 
So these are red snapper for half of the plant. And you can see it's looking pretty productive. These are red snapper for half of the row. So red snapper, red snapper. You can see we've got some nice looking tomatoes in there already. More red snapper. And then down here, these are Bellarosa. Bellarosa are another determinant uh, slicer tomato. And we're starting to get some good size tomatoes coming on here. And again, lots of fruiting spurs within a small space, even though he doesn't have a lot of foliage. Um, so he's doing well. And then more Bellarosa, Bellarosa, Bellarosa. All Bellarosa down through here. These are all determinant tomatoes as well. So the first half of the row here is uh, Martino Roma, and that's a paste type. And you can see they're doing all right. I suspect they're going to kick up this week. And then this side is Tachi, which is also a paste tomato, and these are doing really well. I mean, that is a lot of tomatoes hanging in a short space. Um, and all of the plants are like that. You can see he's got a nice cluster of fruit hanging there. And there's like, they just put off infinite fruiting spurs. So these should do pretty well for us. So friends, between the tractor and the helicopters and the loud cars going by, I am not gonna finish this. Um, so you guys will have to check back in next week and I'll start on this side of the garden and show you what all is over here. And I can't wait to see you guys then. Bye.